Welcome back to the Enlightened Misfits podcast. I am your host, Lauren. And in today's episode, I have an amazing guest for you today. I have Melissa. She is a woman's executive and business coach. Now, Melissa, can you share a little bit about your journey and what led you to become an executive business coach focusing on women over 40? I can, and thank you. So I was born and raised in Philadelphia, and I grew up in the foster care system. I was I went in at the age of seven and aged out of the system at 18. Now, a lot of people, they will say, oh, wow, you know, and start to feel sorry for you, but that was the beginning of the forming of me. And the reason why I say that is because I always had this innate ability to connect to people, make them feel safe, and kind of be their guide to get them through when they weren't strong enough to do it themselves. So I, of course, at a very young age, picked that up. And so all through my childhood, I really wanted to make a profound difference and be there and empower other children who just didn't have it in them to get through some of those trying times. Now, keep in mind, I was in the system a very long time ago, <laughs> um, so I'm sure things have changed. Then I fell into human resources and I was in human resources for over 30 years. <laughs> and I focused on learning and development, leadership development. And I cannot begin to tell you how much pride and joy that I have bringing value to people and seeing that professional and personal growth. So after being in the corporate world for so long, I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to be able to help women understand their value. I wanted them to really just embrace themselves and be the leader that they can be. Because quite frankly, there aren't enough female leaders out there in the world. And I was working in construction and really male-oriented roles. So I know the challenges in the corporate environment and the barriers that women face and I want to make a difference. I want their voices to be heard. I want them to be able to not only grow within themselves, but to bring other women along behind them and shatter that glass ceiling, not just break it, but shatter it and, and find their own, find their own way and, and be a part of their journey to get them there. Because as you know, as a woman, as a woman, everyone's journey is different. Yes. Yeah. So definitely. that's why I do what I do. I love that. And I was going to, the one thing that popped in my mind when you had said that um, when you were in construction and it was very male dominant, I feel like just the, before we got on the recording, we were talking about um, social media. And I feel like I've been having a lot of conversations with different people. One, actually, um, she is helping to change like the online space. So she's putting more feminine like archetypes in the actual, um, you know, I feel like it's starting to kind of be more, you know, it's not going to be, it's not like women, um, you know, dominant right now, but I feel like it's going to be balanced. I mean, not that we need to get rid of all the ma masculine energy. Right. Feel exactly. Like the, the balance of it would be, you know, not so much masculine energy on the internet. I feel like it will help sale, like, you know, social media strategy. I feel like it will help people like with abundance and like clients. And I just feel like, yeah, I, I didn't really even the awareness of when that was said, I had no idea. Like I didn't, um, I was like, oh yeah, now that you point that out, it is very male dominant. And it's like, I jokingly say it must've been a, um, a male that had created this because I'm like, it's so diff. Like, why is it so hard? It should be so easy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Can we hit pause just one second? I'm so sorry. My son locked mm -hmm. himself out the house. Oh yeah. Um, so the next question that I um, have was when you said that your um, you serve women over 40 in your coaching practice, what inspired you to specifically serve women over 40? So as a woman in my 50s, I can tell you that the journey in your 40s is where you really begin to take 
your goals and your life seriously. It's like you're ready to really be driven. You are now familiar with yourself and you've taken through your 20s and your 30s. So you're, you're, you're kind of at the point where you're eliminating those unnecessary relationships. You're eliminating anything that doesn't serve you and you're ready to chase down those dreams. So I do work with women under 40, um, aspiring emerging leaders, young, you know, young women that, that have that in them because they have so many life experiences that might have bought them there earlier. However, the women over 40, you know, I just love their energy, their passion, and their drive. And then most importantly, I, you know, after working with so many men and women throughout the years, I've learned that, you know, in the 40s, it's like you're almost trying to not like prove yourself where you're just hammering it down, but you you want your life and your career to be at a certain point and you're willing to do the work to do it. And it's like more agility kicks in during yeah. that time where you're you're able to pick things up. You're able to, you know, evaluate and process different thoughts, feelings, and and what does serve you, what doesn't serve you. So that's why I really enjoy working with women over 40 because I'm high energy and I I like that momentum. You know, it, it just, it feels good. It feels right. And I want to help those women achieve those dreams that they want to achieve and have that career that they want to have. And by then they kind of, they really do know what they want, right? Yeah. They yeah. have a sense for it. And I kind of help them bridge that gap so that they're able to do it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I, I just, I mean, I totally understand. Well, I feel like sometimes I'm like maybe 50 or 60 some days, but I feel like just because I have a lot of life experiences, I do know that there is, there's a reason why until 30, you have this trial and error period of like, you have all this stuff going on and it's exactly. like, you, know, you don't really know where to go. You have to just try it. And then it's like, you know, I love that you're very, that focus driven there because I feel like that is exactly what you can use. Like you said, high, high energy. So you can use all of your energy to help those people. So I love that. Thank you. Um, now you mentioned offering to offering to our listeners, two free coaching sessions. Can you elaborate on what these sessions entail and how you can benefit and how this can benefit the listeners? Cause I know a lot of people listening will definitely want. To yes. Know. So, you know, the one thing about coaching that surprises me sometimes is so many people are now a coach, right? Yeah. And a lot of women really don't understand the true power of coaching. So I like to give them a feel for what they can expect and let them actually feel the process before making a commitment. So I would work, they bring their challenges, we get to know each other, <laughs> um, and then I help them sort through what would really help bring that their life into balance and begin working with them on that challenge or opportunity. You know, some women come to me and they say, I'm stuck in my career, I can assess them, help them sort things out and plan it out. We all go right to the computer and we don't do a lot of whiteboarding out or planning or, you know, really thinking things and pulling them through. So the free sessions I give is to really help them analyze all aspects of their life to determine where they should start working and what would be most impactful to them. Yeah, I love that. I was going to say, when you had said that, um, like, draw it out, map it out, I feel like I was one of those people that when, you know, if I was like, you know, communicating or like, you know, trying to find like a mentor or a coach or whoever a couple of years ago, it was all like, like you said, going to the computer and it's like, can we just like map 
this out so I can see it because I'm always somebody that has to journal like manifestation stuff I'm like I have to write it down mm -hmm, <laughs> it's, like, mm -hmm. it's like oh type it in a word doc I'm like no 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 I have to write it down first and then it's like then I can send it to you in a word doc yes <laughs> exactly Not, and it's it, it's takes some of my clients a little well I call my clients coaches I think client the word client is very thorough <laughs> yeah, and I'm a trainer actually. at heart so yeah. my coaches you know, at first they're like, wow, you give us these great journals and workbooks and, and documents. Can you make them PDF writable? No, I will not, because then you're going to go straight to the computer to start to type things out. Or you might be tempted to use the AI. I don't want the AI's thoughts. I want you to write yeah. it out. And plus that engages the creative part of your brain. So you're going to get more out of it when you are actually writing it down. Yes, I actually, it's actually interesting. I don't want to say funny. It's actually interesting that you talked about AI because I know that there's like a hate, love, hate relationship. I know it was for me. I like AI when it's coming up with like a title or something or like, yes. what can I name this? Because it's like, yes. I don't, I know I could probably sit here and think about it, but I know that that the AI could, you know, help me a little bit more. But when it comes to, I know exactly when a couple of my cl um, clients, uh, which I should probably adapt to the coachee because that actually sounds so much more. Doesn't <laughs> it? Better. I was going to say, I might, you might hear me call people coachees now because it's like, that's clients, fine. Yeah. That's fine. Borrow um, it I away. I usually call my friend, I'm like my friend, but it's usually like a, some, a client of mine. <laughs> like you have all these friends Lauren I'm like yes I guess I do <laughs> um but yes I am like did you use AI or did you write that you know because it's like I can tell the different words and it's very like I should say professional unemotional and I mean I know yes. I sometimes you need an unemotional response maybe in an email like to another colleague or your boss or something so yeah sure I like exactly that, it's unattached use. yes yes and you can, I feel like you can feel that. So that's actually a really good, a lot of people are like, you know, Hey, can I have a PDF or, you know, and no, no, I, this is, this is what it is. I like that because then it's like, like you said, making them use their creativity. And I feel like that helps a lot with, you know, your chakras, keeping you balanced, all that stuff. But yeah, I love that. It really does. You know, I did a, um, I do meditation sessions, guided meditation sessions, because I just firmly believe that we need to, as leaders and women, be as balanced as possible. Now, usually when someone says guided meditation, you think they're just going to, you know, have some soft music playing in the background and they're just going to say some words. Well, I take it a step further. So before my sessions, I actually do a mini group session with them. I go over breathing techniques. I use the feeling wheel so that they can really distill down the one word of the things that they, emotions they'd like to call in and then pick the words that they want, the words that they want to release, right? But it really distills right. it down for them so that when they're meditating, they don't have to have these long scripts in their head, right? right. Then I help them set intention for that specific session. And then my basic meditation that I always offer to everyone, it's to help them release and manifest the things that they want in their life or their career. Then on top of that, I've partnered with a Reiki practitioner and we do sound healing in the session. So doing all this for women, I love it when they say, my God, I've never had an experience like this. And is how did you weave coaching into meditation? And why don't more people do this? Because they always just kind of tell you, all right, we're going to meditate. And I don't always get what I need out of it. But with you, I feel like I'm getting what I need out of it and more. So that's the type of experience that I want to provide to my coachees because that balance is so important. Oh my gosh, I just can't begin to tell you. And I know that some people aren't into chakras. They're not into, you know, I like tapping into the new moon energy and, and oh, yeah. you know, um, but I think weaving in the holistic healing and manifestation and really the balance 
it helps the woman, her total being overall. Yes. I was going to say, you must be a soul sister from another lifetime because everything that you said, it's literally like what I do. Um, so I'm a Thady Reiki master. So what I, and I more do quantum healing. So it's okay. more of like, um, I do do sound, like I will play if they need, um, like, you know, that soft music, but mine is all like intuitively tapping into, like I explained to them, like you're, I'm going to go from top to bottom, like, you know, your, or from bottom to top, however, you know, I feel called to do it. And mm-hmm. you know, I tell them you're going to, feel, you know, so basically it's like, I'm like an, 3d like you know physically i'm still here but the mm-hmm. way when i do it is i you know i'm basically mirroring them so then i can feel in my body if it's tight in their like and i ask them too like i'll ask them where are you feeling tight or you know of course with the intention of just one thing you can't do all i mean right. you could, i can realign the chakras for them but it's just like it can be very overwhelming <laughs> it can be very draining for that that person yes. And it's like, we're going to just do one thing at a time, like one, you know, just like one day at a time. And most Mm -hmm. of the time people are like, when they tell me they don't understand what I'm doing or they don't, they're like, I don't know. It's because they have, don't have an understanding of, for one, all of us are intuitive and, you know, clear out, you know, it doesn't mean just because I do what I do, you can't do it, what I do, right? It's like, I need to just teach you mm-hmm. and you just have to have that mm-hmm. belief. And I feel like more and more people are like, I can meditate. I, you know, I don't know if you run into this, but every single day I run into somebody that says I can't meditate. I'm like, that is such a lie. Why are you lying to yourself? Yes. That's actually really mean to lie to yourself because you can meditate. It's just, you need to, you know, either you need to learn or you need to work with somebody that like can help you. So yeah, I love right. that you have partnered with a Reiki master because I feel like we, I always tell people we are Reiki. Like we have that yes. energy inside of us. It's not that you yeah. need to go get it from somewhere else or go buy it. It's not, that's not how it works. And a lot of people, you know, I, and that's why I started, that's why I became a Reiki master is because I've noticed that people would make, and not that this is like, I'm not shaming anybody for doing this, but Mm-hmm. From my standpoint, it's just like, why would you make somebody go pay all this money, thousands of dollars, so they can just tap into their own energy? And I'm like, I don't, that doesn't make any sense. Like, I could, I can place people with this. Like, theta is right. more like emotional healing. So mm-hmm. I do a lot of theta first. But if somebody says, can I do this? I'm like, sure. And then we do a session, they get placements. And then, you know, they have to practice then two, right. like two, then master. And it's like, yeah, you can do this. Now, most people, if they want to do it for like healing in their business. It's one thing, but then mm-hmm. obviously I have to teach them that too, but it's like, I just teach them what I know. And then they just kind of pick up with whatever, but I never really resonated with people that make you pay thousands of dollars, you know, just to go get placed with one, two, and th- I'm just like, no. That is just, right. that, I don't think that is how it's supposed to be. I just truly don't believe that, but I understand it's their business. And I'm like, I, I now see people doing it more virtual, recording themselves, you know, by this program, because that's how it's supposed to be. And, you know, obviously right. supporting the individual on that. So yeah. I Correct. That. Yeah. Oh, oh I, I love it. Conversation. <laughs> I, love it. I, I think we are soul sisters. I gotta say. Yeah. Yes. It's like when you were talking about that, I was like, oh my goodness, how did, how, she's like, how, she knows my whole life. <laughs> and you know, I think that's the beauty of coaching, right? When yes. you, when you are a beacon and you're walking in alignment with your life's purpose, you do become mm-hmm. a beacon. People will migrate to you yes. automatically. You will connect, right? Because you yes. can't help but connect. Yes. Yeah. And I love that you said that because everybody always asks me about my business, the mermaid light, because they're like, how did you come up with that? I'm like, well, I know I was a mermaid in past life. I used to love mermaids and you know, it was just, it just felt right. But I, the, the light part came from, I loved lighthouses and I realized through my own journey that lighthouses, they don't go finding people. They, they don't go finding ships to save, right? They sit in the because they yeah. can't actually. <laughs> and then they right. the ship come to them. Right. So people always said to me, like, what do you do or how do you help people? Um, and I was like, well, most people are guided to me. Um, universal. I feel like I can help an individual or an entrepreneur, but they have mm-hmm. their eyes guided to me for whatever reason that I could help them with. And it could be a for a short time, a time, 
And then, you know, it just kind of came up with, you know, the, the mermaid part is the more feminine. And I had to learn how to be more feminine and be more in my, you know, feminine energy. And then of course, Mm -hmm. I love mermaids. So people are like, wow, like I didn't realize it was a deep meaning. I was like, oh yeah, everything with me is deep. I have a mermaid on my wall. (laughs) I absolutely have a mermaid on my wall. I love mermaid. I love anything that has to do with the ocean, but I do also have a fascination with mermaids. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's, see, I'm telling you more and more synchronicities. (laughs) More and more. (laughs) I love that. So the only, the other question that I had for you too, is so many people that I have, or many women, I should say that I've met um, that are in executive roles struggle with this quote unquote, I don't even want to call it this work-life balance. Cause I don't, I truly don't believe in that. I just feel like it's just balance, but from mm-hmm. your perspective, I would love to hear like how you help your clients, like sh- make this meaningful um, balance between their professional and their personal life. So again, um, when you are trying to help people find balance, it's not about what we believe is balance. It's about the balance that is comfortable to them. So I worked with one coachee and she was an executive on the East Coast. So you know what that hustle bustle life is like. And she always told me, I can't stand it when people tell me I need more work-life balance. The, what I'm giving is what I want to give. So what I did was help her see how she could be more effective with other people and herself by at least taking count as to what is on her plate. And I teach them to do that Papa style because I'm a foodie and a lot of women that I coach are foodies too. So I just say, you know, we're going to, We're going to serve up your life tapa style and we're going to create a balance so that your self-care is woven in there because that's the piece they tend not to put in there. They will be there for their family. They will be there for everyone on the job and they don't understand that you can't pour from an empty or a full cup, right? Right. So I you can't that. pour yes. from either pour one. Cup. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. So what I do is help them find the comfortable balance for them by not just beating them over the head that you have to have balance. I help them weave in self-care, exploring, growing, and learning. Because when you put those things in a bucket and you start to dedicate more of your time to those things, the balance is automatically going to come. So I don't have to keep beating it over your head. I'm just going to, okay. Um, I encourage my coaches to do R and R reflect and realign. So the more R and R they do, right. The more reflection, the more realignment they do, the more balance they're going to have because they're going to be focused inward and outward. Right. And I, I was going to say, it's, it, I literally wanted, when you were getting ready to say it, I was like, I hope she's going to say not rest and relaxation, <laughs> but then you I said, yeah. yes, yeah. because I, that's another thing that I feel like has to be called out in this world because, and I yes. know about calling people out, especially, you know, I'm like, I don't know. You know, I know a lot of people are like, ah, oh, she just says whatever on the podcast. Cause I feel like these conversations have to be talked about. And I feel like the more that it's talked about it more, it gives more like, especially somebody in an executive role. Like I have a lot of friends that are Correct. in these executive roles that, and I'm like, God, why do you do that? Like, and they're just like, well, I just have to. And I was like, no, you don't like, like you don't though. Like who's telling you, you have to. Right. And then they just don't really know how they're like, my, are you telling yourself that you have to, right? So it's like, yeah, I love that if you were to reflect and then you can reflect and then that all that also goes outward, like you said. So yeah. Exactly. And that realignment is critical, right? Yes. You have to be able to do yeah. it. And I have authentic conversations with women. I mean, I'll be yes. honest with you, even though I was in human resources and people would say <laughs> when I was working, are you sure you're in HR? I said, look, I'm going to be authentic and transparent. You don't have time to read between the lines. You want to take action and I'm going to help you take action. So I cannot be soft about it and beat around the bush. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm not going to ask you a series of questions 
to guide you in that self-reflection so that you can really understand it and it resonates with you, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I will play devil's advocate with you. I will ask you, you know, well, if you don't do this, what happens? If you do do this, what will happen? Just so that, you know, it's really resonating within you. But I don't mind having those difficult conversations yeah. um, with executives and business leaders, with both of them, um, um, like a, you know, a business owner or, or an executive that is part of an organization. I've noticed that they are the ones that set these very high expectations on themselves. Yes. So what yes. I help them do is clearly define their role as an executive and as a woman, you know, because right. we take on added roles naturally. Yeah. <laughs> and before yeah. we know it, we're like, we have a thousand different roles that we're playing. I like helping women evaluate the various roles that they're playing in their life and make them more concise so that they are getting value from it and they're bringing value to others. Because when it all boils down to it, that's what's most important to most women is bringing value. Yes. Yes. I definitely agree. Yes. So as a podcast guest, what are some key takeaways or actionable advice that you hope to leave with our listeners, particularly those that resonate with the themes of manifestation, goals, self-love, using meditation for growth? I would like to say that it is very important for us as women to be able to get our own stuff together so that we are able and capable of guiding and helping others. By focusing on yourself and aligning yourself to that right coach, to that right mentor, and getting the support that you need is absolutely positively critical. Um, so many people out there will misguide you, or if you try to do it on your own, you can get frustrated, and it's a missed opportunity for you to make the impact on others and yourself and to have the life and career if you want if you don't step up to the challenge to make sure that you have the right support of that so how can um how can the listeners get a hold of you um they can you... get a hold of me at my website co okay. um, coachingbymel.com I have a vision quest on there to help people get to know me a little bit so that they can get a feel for what a session would be like. For your okay. listeners, all they have to do is set up that clarity call and that doesn't go against their free coaching. That's for me to explore with them, to see where they are in their life, where they would like help. And again, they will have the free coaching sessions just to kind of try before you buy. I also work with corporate um, HR teams to help teach and coach them on how to support and grow their people because after being in HR for so long, um, I know that it's really important for companies um, to want to create the culture that they want. But wouldn't it be amazing to create the culture with doing more things like starting your leaders off with mindful meditation, you know, every day? I really want that to make a difference in the workplace so that people feel connected um, to their teams. And if they own a business, that they're just creating an awesome environment of value and growth because everyone thinks they have to do all this fancy stuff in the workplace and they don't. Show your people that they're valued, show them, show them, you know, let them feel it and give them an opportunity to grow. And that's where I come in, being able to help leaders help themselves grow and their teams grow. I love that. So, and I'll make sure that you, um, your links and everything are in the description box on YouTube. And then if you're listening to this, it'll be in the description box um, on wherever streaming platform that you're listening to. So thanks so much today for joining us. 
and on the Enlightened Misfits podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe. You can leave a review and then share with somebody that you feel that will gain value from listening to this. Stay tuned for more captivating conversations in the future. I hope you have an amazing rest of your week and I will see you next time.